Welcome back to Horror Hound Theater with Sid. I'm Sydney Pickle, coming up on part two of Mike Pickle's Stab Awake. Kate, Helen, Jerry, and Phil drive up to the cabin to meet their friends. In other words, victims. The weed comes out and you know everyone's gonna die soon. Another group of victims, I mean friends, arrive with booze and you know the carnage is creeping like a ticking time bomb. Well, enjoy part two of Stab Awake and we'll talk more about it when I come back. Roll the tape. Oh, and watch out for songs from bands like Babyland, Mode, Weatherground, and Caustic that keep the story moving and blend into the killing until half the cast is dead before you know. You'll see. Enjoy, horror hounds. Yeah! Like that again or anytime on this trip and I'll cut your balls off. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, come on, I was just teasing. You don't want your panties in a bunch. <laughs> I don't talk about my panties either. Oh, that was so hot. Can you say my panties again, please? <laughs> <laughs> I guess you think this perverted torture is funny. Oh, will you relax? He's harmless. You're getting yourself worked up already. That's what happens when you are in love. Uh-uh. That is so gross. <laughs> there, that's enough. Let's save them for the cabin, okay? Okay, Mom. Why does it have to ride with us? The pervert's driving me crazy. And the weirdo's creeping me out. Well, then you should drive your own car. You know I don't have a car. Okay, then you don't have a choice, do you? Just hit him, who cares? Oh my god, this place is so awesome. I love it. What's up? Hey, how's it going? What's up, man? Good man. Jerry, what the fuck has been too long? Man, you're too busy being a little band bitch. Oh, band bitch, fuck you, man. Shit, band bitch could all the band bitches. Yeah, right, right. What's up with this fucker? Nah, man, he crossed the plane yesterday. Hadn't said much since then. What? Yeah. Shit, what the fuck? Let's take him inside and see if we can't cure him with that. Oh, oh, oh no. Fucking bomb his pussy plug crown of you ever had, dude. <laughs> if that shit don't work, shit, I got some shrooms in my bag. Oh, no. Dude, we gotta take it Fame. down a little bit, my man. Come on. Let's at least get the bags in before we strike that bad boy up, right? Get the bags in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hey, hey. Hey, go come on, come on, man. Hey, you guys have a show coming up next week, right? Some hole in the wall. Probably a bunch of snobs, but you know, we'll play anywhere. That's awesome. Oh, that's totally awesome, man. You ever play the guitar with your dick? Yeah, actually I have. <laughs> you never turn off, do you? Mm -hmm. Mo, please light up that joint before I claw this asshole's eyes out. Oh, sure, coming right up. Uh, where's everybody else? No, oh, Mary and the rest of the guys will be here later. It'll be a full house before you know it. Hey, what's up with Phil, man? He went through that opening a door to another dimension shit he was talking about. No fucking fool. I didn't want to bring him, but Jerry insisted that he'd be okay. Okay, guys, come on. You know Phil. You know he gets deep into this shit. I mean, yeah, see? Light that up and he'll find out this is the best dimension that there is, all right? He'll be back. I hope so, man. He's starting to creep me out. Thank you. Oh, you 
Take a shot, come on! You can talk to me, what happened today? What happened? Whatever it is, you can tell me. Listen, I got this shit here. You drink it. You come party with me, all right? Please? I care about you, you know? Dude, I can't believe AJ passed the fuck out. What kind of pussy drummer falls asleep at a cabin with a bunch of single hot chicks? Yeah, but quantity isn't necessarily quality. Fuck you, Jerry. <laughs> I would love to. That'd be awesome. Taking advantage of the surplus. better come up for air or you're gonna drown in the love. <laughs> you guys are like fogging up the windows. Like get a fucking room or something. That sounds like a good idea, you want to? That sounds like a good idea to me. Let's go. He's gonna put his little peeny in her. In her vagini? <laughs> <laughs> put your peeny in her vagini. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Step out of it. You're really starting to scare me. I told you he's scary. Face it, he's just a creep. You know what? I'm sick of your bullshit, Helen. One more word about Bill, and I'll make you eat those ugly ass toes. <laughs> just like, oh, honey, calm down. You know, I just like to talk shit. It doesn't mean anything. Exactly. So why don't you say something that means something? Don't stay too long. What? What did you say? Too long in one place, you start to stink. That's when the vultures can feed. Creepy! Phil finally opens his mouth and it's code for you are all about to die. My dad had to imagine himself killing everyone in the room for wronging him to achieve the creepiness in that scene. 
Part two begins on the road to the cabin. Phil gives dirty ass looks to Jerry and all the rest while Jerry's being a complete pervert. Jerry is pretty pervy and creepy, but Phil definitely has him beat with creep factor. They arrive at the cabin and Pothead Mo pulls out a joint. Mo had to smoke fake weed because his weak ass couldn't take real weed. Just kidding, they wanted to be professional and smoking real weed in multiple takes would have had everyone eating all the food in the cabin and going to sleep and the kills would have been way less exciting. The creepy river guy sneaks in with a knife and we see what inspired the name of the movie as the AJ character gets stabbed awake in the loft. You probably didn't notice, but there was a huge fridge in the corner where Phil was sitting. It was gone when they went back for a second weekend of filming. Movie magic, am I right? Anyway, at the end of part two, Eric and Lindsay go upstairs to fornicate right into the waiting arms of the killer. You can guess what happens next, but come back to see how it plays out on Stab Awake part three, coming up on the next Horror Hound Theater. Thanks for watching. I'm Sid. See you next time, freaks.